So in this session, I would like to understand how the Schrodinger equation tells us about the electron energy levels within an atom. And I'd like to use that to gain an understanding of what we call the emission spectrum of hydrogen. And uh, as, a, as a tool, really, to understand how the Schrodinger equation was verified experimentally. So I introduced the Schrodinger equation in the last lecture. And one of the key conclusions from the Schrodinger equation is that we're able to calculate the binding energy of an electron. This is how tightly the electron is uh, held by the nucleus of the atom. And what the Schrodinger equation tells us is that the binding energies are quantized. So electrons reside in energy levels as you move away from the nucleus. We give these energy levels a, a quantum number that we call the principal quantum number n, and we can calculate the energy associated with each of these energy levels by using the equation that you see on the left hand side here. So we say that the binding energy is equal to the negative of the Rydberg constant divided by this principal quantum number n squared. And n can be um, any positive integer, one, two, three, four. So let's think about that in a little bit more detail then. Well, we can describe the n equals one energy level, and that is just the uh, negative value of the Rydberg constant, because we're dividing the Rydberg constant by one squared. We compare that to the energy of a free electron, uh, which we nominally give uh, a value in energy level of zero. So every other energy level has a negative value in this case. And essentially, this equation tells us the energy levels in a hydrogen atom. So I'm specifically talking about hydrogen here, a one electron system, and we'll move on to multi electron systems as we move to the next lecture. We can calculate the energy that's associated with an electron in the n equals 2 shell. Similarly, the n equals 3, 4, 5, and we could go on. But the important thing is, is that speaking specifically about the hydrogen atom here, the Schrodinger equation tells us that these energy levels are quantized, they have fixed values. And clearly, then we know that the lowest energy or the n equals one state is the most stable state for the hydrogen atom. Now, from this idea of binding energy, we are able to work out ionization energy. So this is just the positive value of the uh, binding energy. And so we can work out the ionization energy for an electron within one of these energy levels. So this will always be a positive value because we've got to put in energy to release an electron. And we can work it out as just taking, a, as I said, the negative of the, the, the binding energy. So for example, the ionization energy, the energy that's required to remove an electron from the n equals one level in hydrogen, is 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. If we were to have an electron, an electron in this n equals two level, we call this the first excited state, then that would require an energy of 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And you'll note here that uh, we can go up. So this is the, the n equals four level is the third excited state. Now, you'll remember that hydrogen isn't the only one electron atom. Helium plus is a one electron atom. Lithium two plus is a one electron atom. And so we have to modify our equation slightly when thinking about the binding energy for um, other one electron systems that have more than one proton. So, so hydrogen has one proton, um, helium and lithium have more than one proton. And so what we do is we add this Z squared, where Z is the atomic number, parameter into our equation. And that tells us a couple of things. It tells us that 
in a, a one electron system, the electron is bound more weakly when n is big. That makes sense because electrons are further away from the nucleus and therefore um, are, are less constrained or less pulled by the positive charge of the nucleus. And it tells us that the electron is bound more tightly when Z is big. So when the atomic number is big, the electron is held more tightly by the nucleus. That makes sense because there's a greater degree of positive charge pulling the electron towards the nucleus. So those are some things that come out of the Schrodinger equation. This idea of quantized energy levels, we're talking specifically about hydrogen today because it's the simplest one electron system. But how do we know that we can trust the Schrodinger equation? This is a, a very theoretical um, based picture of the atom. And the question is, is there any experimental evidence that verify the mathematics that come out of the Schrodinger equation? And the answer is yes, that these energy levels can be determined experimentally and we can check that they match the Schrodinger equation. There are two important experiments that can be conducted to verify this idea of energy levels. The first is uh, photon emission and the second is photon absorption. I'll talk firstly by considering photon emission. What we do in photon emission is we irradiate a sample with light energy and we promote an electron to a higher energy level within the atom. And when that uh, electron transitions from the higher energy level to the lower energy state, a photon is emitted. And the important thing is, is that the energy of that photon is exactly the same as the energy difference between the two states. So the electron has an initial state and a final state here. And the energy of the emitted photon is exactly equal to the energy difference between those two states. And of course, if we know something about the energy of that photon, we can calculate the frequency and the wavelength of the photon. And the calculation of the wavelength is the really important thing here. So, for example, if I took a sample of hydrogen and I promoted an electron, an electron from the n equals two energy level up to the n equals six energy level, eventually that would fall back down. It would emit a photon and we could calculate the energy difference as well as the frequency and the wavelength associated with that energy difference. We can think about the relationships between the energy, frequency and wavelength here. So let's imagine I've got uh, a, a system by where my electron falls down from the n equals three energy level to the n equals one energy level. And I compare that to uh, if an electron falls from the n equals five to the n equals one energy level. Uh, the two have a different difference in energy. And so if you consider the case of the larger energy difference, the n equals five to the n equals one transition, we can ex expect our emitted photon to have a high frequency and a short wavelength because of that larger energy difference. If we compare that to the n equals three to the n equals one transition, a smaller energy difference, we would expect the photon when compared to my previous example here to have a low frequency and a longer wavelength. Now you can see these things in hydrogen. You can actually um, look at the, the values um, and verify the Schrodinger equation. So what we do is we take a gas discharge tube that is full of hydrogen and we apply a potential difference across it. So we excite all of the atoms within my hydrogen sample and we promote electrons to higher energy states, to, to excited states. And they emit photons as those electrons start to fall down from those higher energy states. And the light that's emitted is a kind of bright blue light, but we can separate that up into its individual wavelengths by passing it through a prism or a diffraction grating. And we can analyze the wavelengths of light that are emitted and see which energy transitions within the hydrogen atom each one of those wavelengths of light corresponds to. And of course, if we know the wavelengths of light, we can calculate the energy difference between the transitions or for the transitions. 
Now, when we do this, uh, we are not the first people to observe these spectral lines. J.J. Balmer um, observed these spectral lines of hydrogen in 1885, and he calculated that the frequency of the light was um, related to the following equation. So 3.29 times 10 to the 15 multiplied by 1 over 4 minus 1 over n squared where n was equal to 3, 4, or 5. Now, this was very puzzling in 1885. Of course, we now know that that n is, is the principal quantum number, the value of these energy levels. So what was he seeing? Well, he was seeing electron transitions that all end up in the n equals 2 final state. So he was seeing uh, a line within the kind of red region, about 680 nanometers. And that corresponds to an electron transitioning from the n equals 3 to the n equals 2 state. He saw a green line at about 480 nanometers. That corresponds to an electron moving from the n equals 4 to the n equals 2 state. He saw a blue line um, about, at about 450 nanometers and a purple line at about 420 nanometers. So he was seeing electrons that were transitioning from various states all ending up in the n equals 2 final state. And these wavelengths, when you calculate the energy of these photons, of course, remember that they equal exactly the difference between these energy levels. These wavelengths uh, experimentally agree with the Schrodinger equation to one part in 10. So here's a way of verifying the Schrodinger equation. And of course, there are lots more transitions. It's just that we can't see them. And we can't see them because they occur in the in the visible range, uh, sorry, in the infrared range and the UV range.